Well, they have knees replaced all over in the congregation, which is going to be running all over. <laughs> you know, I have any women. <laughs> That is the thing, it seems like knees and hips. Okay. Anything else? Right, let's begin with prayer then. Lord God, we, we come to you with our requests and our thank yous and uh, know that you are a God who continues to watch over us and guide us and are there for our benefit for our good. We pray, Lord, that you would be with Mike Greer as he is improving from COVID and uh, watch over his family and those that are watching over him. Give guidance to the medical people. And we pray, Lord, that uh, he would be able to come home soon. We pray for Matt with pancreatic problems, Lord. Uh, you, you know what his needs are. You know what is going on. We just ask that you would give wisdom to the doctors and guide them and direct them and so that Matt would have the best medical attention possible, Lord. And if it be your will, we ask that you would put healing on his body as well. And with Karen Bergeron, who will be having knee replacement, Lord, we just ask that you would bless the doctors, that they would do very well in their work and that Karen would... Uh, respond to that replacement as well and not have any complications and be able to um, get up and get around as I'm sure she's looking forward to that. Lord, we ask that you would uh, bless us with your presence at our Bible study today. Let your Holy Spirit give us guidance as we again take a look at this topic of wisdom, uh, wisdom that comes from you, not from outside sources and not from so-called experts, but Wisdom that leads us to everlasting life. Bless us now. Increase our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We are on page 21. Oh, there's Norma. Can't keep Norma down. <laughs> awesome. How is Dallas? <laughs> I don't know. Well, this wasn't a Dallas visit? This no, was the furnace thing. Okay. <laughs> furnace furnace thing. Thing. We need furnaces yet. <laughs> yes. Oh, they couldn't get the air they threw the one that put the air conditioning in before. Put the wrong one in that shouldn't have been in for mobile home. Oh. Here. So I have to get a new, there's still some more to do at an added expense for the air yes. conditioner. But if they had put that in, I wouldn't have been able to be. They wouldn't have been done yet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Glad you made it, Norma. <clears throat> okay, we're on page 21 in your guides, which is the first page of the new set of uh, guides that we just handed out there. Wisdom teaches fear and trust the Lord. Uh, as we get started, I'd like you to again turn to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. This is one that we started right out with one of our first readings. And I just want to bring us up to date on that. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. You would uh, look at that one and someone read that. Remind us. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity. Is, is that chapter 1? Chapter one. Well, maybe I'm back. Okay. Well, so it was a good first. <laughs> <laughs> They're all very good. Really. You're right. You must have felt yeah. the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. All right. All right. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and discipline. But we want to talk a little bit about the fear of the Lord. We hear that certainly within the context of our faith walk. We hear that in terms of our worship, all that fear of the Lord. And what does that mean? Uh, what are some things that come to your mind when you think of and you hear that phrase, the fear of the Lord? <laughs> Not be afraid. 
Okay. Some uh, somewhat negative then. Yeah, Would it, it, I, okay. The fear of the Lord. It, it's it's negative because fear is a word we hear yeah. very often nowadays. Yeah. Okay. And and where we seem to be growing up with more fear than with positivity or anything else. We fear this, we fear that, we fear the food we eat, we fear <laughs> the water we drink, we fear, you know, all of that. Well, you know, God's word tells us about fearing the Lord. And that fear of the Lord is, is used in the way of a positive thing, not to be afraid, but to stand in awe, to stand in respect, to say, wow. What a great God we have. That's the fear that we hear when we see fear throughout scripture. To, to fear is not to be afraid, but it is to stand in awe of God and to acknowledge that this is the one who has the answers to our life and everything about that and all from that standpoint. And that's why that word trust then comes in, in terms of this particular section. Wisdom teaches fear and trust the Lord. So we stand in awe and then we trust because he is the awesome God we believe in. Our theme verse for this is actually Proverbs 14, verse 27. It's written right on your page there. So we'll just take a look at it. There on page 21 it says the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, turning a man from the snares of death. Now there's the positivity that we don't get when we just say fear of the Lord and we have that negativity coming in. So in that phrase, what, what is it telling you? What do you see? What do you see in those words the fear of the lord is a fountain of life turning a man from the snares of death what death is being talked about eternal death eternal death eternal death death and hell okay the snares of death that's right so we do not have to fear that. And the fountain of life. It's life after death. <laughs> yeah, it's the, it's the eternal life with Christ after death. It's, it's the eternal life that we have that there from that standpoint. So that is, again, the positivity of that phrase, the fear of the Lord. Our goal in this section is to seek to understand what Proverbs says about the Lord and our relationship with him. And, and that's part of why we started out with this word fear, because if we have a fearful relationship, things aren't going to look right and be right and all. And sorry to say, but at least when I was growing up, there was a lot of times when my parents, and I probably used the word a few times too, and a phrase that was used to actually make someone fearful of God, afraid of God. I don't know if, if you've heard the expression, but my parents would say, watch out or that God's gonna get you, okay? <laughs> do this and God's going to do this to you. See, that was the fear that was used. That was, that was our quote psychology to get our kids in line or get us in line from our parents. You see, God's going to get you. That's not what the Bible has ever taught or teaches. God is not out there. Our God is a God of love. A God of love, not to be afraid of, but to stand in awe of. 
from that standpoint. And that's having then the best relationship with our Lord. And that's, again, wisdom is, is teaching us how to have a good relationship with our Lord, not to fear him, not to be afraid of him. Oh, he's so powerful. He can do anything he wants. He's going to come down. You know, we hear that in church. Sometimes people say, well, I, I'm going to come to church Sunday. I wonder if the roof's going to fall in. <laughs> You know, I, I have heard people say that to me. And, you know, well, the roof didn't fall in. I know it's been week, years that I've been here, Pastor. You, that's not God. That's not the God we trust or believe in. But you see, that's the way we express ourselves, which is so false against the word of God. What's going on here? Going back to our guide. We live in a confusing and dangerous world. The evil around us tries to lure us into following in its path. But if we do, we will find only empty promises and ultimately death. But God seeks to give us wisdom that we might follow him and live eternally with him. In this lesson, we will look at what wisdom teaches about the Lord our relationship with him and the consequences that will have that we will have for our lives. And I put down here something for us to kind of just think about. Can you have a relationship with an inanimate object? No. No. Okay. Okay. So if God wants to have a relationship with us, or we have a relationship with him, then we have a relationship with not an inanimate object, but a living being, a living being, someone that can talk to us, someone that will talk to us, someone that we can talk to. That's what we do in prayer. That's what God does throughout our life in our situations in life. That's what we have in a worship service, God talking to us, we talking to him through our prayers, through our hymns. One of the things, bottom of page 21, number one, one of the things Proverbs instructs us to do is to trust in the Lord. Read Proverbs three, verse five to six. Someone would read that. I'd appreciate it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Thank you. How deep is our trust of the Lord to be? All the way. All the way. Wholeheartedly, I, I put down, wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly. What are we not to do? According to verse five. Not to lean on ourselves, our own understanding. Yeah, yeah. How easy is that? Or how difficult is that? Okay, lean not on our own understanding. We have the answers, don't we? We have the answers. I know what you should do. <laughs> that. Lean not on our own understandings. Trust in the Lord. What will the Lord do as we trust in him and acknowledge him in all our ways? It says to acknowledge literally means to know it in an intimate, personal way. What are we to do? What will the Lord do as we trust in him and acknowledge him in our, all our ways? He's doing a straight path on the right path. Do, do what? 
Keep you on the right path. On keep us path. on the right path. Yeah. Keep us keep us going straight. Yeah. Make your path straight. Okay. We have a tendency to wobble back and forth. Now we'll try this for a while. We'll go this way for a while. And well, uh, let's. I don't know. Somebody said over here might be better. We we'll go back and forth. So many times in our lives, we stay central to God. He will lead us down the path to that. Let's go to chapter 29, verse 25. Someone would read that verse. Fear of man lays a snare, but we should ever trust in the Lord is safe. Okay. What wisdom is there there? We're safe if we follow him. <laughs> We're safe to follow the Lord. But if we follow in man's wisdom, we need to be very careful, isn't it? It could snare us. You see, it could snare us. This is, you know, as, as we've gone through this pandemic and, and many other things, we, we, we hear the wisdom of man. We hear the wisdom that comes from experts and we want to believe that and don't get me wrong, we, we have to listen to that. But we have to make sure whether it's coming from a good source or not because the sources are not all reliable. Uh, you, you've seen how many times, uh, especially elderly people have been scammed and all types of things. And you wonder, how could that ever be? Well, why, why wouldn't they know better? All this and that, but it happens all the time. They're taking somebody seemingly wisdom and misusing it to take away from someone else. And we'd say, well, that wouldn't happen to me. I pray not, but here again is, you know, before we step forward, before we leap, make sure we are trusting in the Lord. You just have to think of Peter. Not in the computer. Not thinking of Peter. Oh, yeah. Think of Peter when he said, oh, I, you know, yep. I'll never do that. But I will, you know. Right. All right. Number two then says, why is the fear of people contrasted with trust in the Lord? Well, they, they may lead us down the wrong path. They may lead us down the wrong path. We would like to think that nobody would do that, but it's happened in friendships. It's happened in our families. It does happen, but not the Lord, trusting in the Lord. Let's take a look at chapter 22, verses 17 to 19. Someone would read those three. Pay attention and listen to the saying of the wise. Apply your heart to what I teach. For it is pleasing when you keep them in your heart and have all of them ready on your lips oh so that your trust may be in the lord i keep you today even you all right in order to get the most out of wisdom's teaching how are we how are we to approach learning it listen, listen yes be in the word 
okay? Be in the word, okay? Be attentive to what is being said. Um, applying what wisdom says, applying what the word says. What is the goal of wisdom's teaching? Verse 18. When we keep wisdom in our hearts, it is pleasing to the Lord. Tell others about it. Yes, yes, yes. And encourage others from that standpoint. Next section, Proverbs also enjoins us to fear the Lord. As yes, I'm. Um, so that your trust may be in the Lord, I teach you today, even you. I, I, I. First of all, I teach you today. The word I, wisdom is talking to us now. So the I is not. God is not okay. the the writer or anyone else. It is wisdom. Wisdom is teaching us today. Wisdom teaches us every day. But we don't always trust in that wisdom that we're taught. We say, I've got a better idea. And that's where we find the snare. That's where we need to be very careful of is what is the source of the wisdom that we are being told? And, and that source, again, goes back to, do we have a full relationship with our eternal God? Do we have that relation? Do we go back to him and say, Lord, you know, is this good for me? Is this not good? And we seek that and we compare that to what God says. But God says in his word, not just in a phrase or two, but throughout the scriptures. And that's that's part of us being in the word, studying the word. That's why it, it's a constant thing to know what does God say? You know, he teaches us about love, doesn't he? Why is there so much hate in the world if if we understand and know what love is? Because we don't apply the wisdom that God gives us in love. People want to apply their own love. And as I've shared with you a number of times, probably, you know, when I did the prison ministry, you know, when those guys, when we talked about love, they knew love one way. I love you as long as you do what you, I tell you to do. And when you cross me, bang, you're dead. That's as far as my love goes. Is that the love God gives us? When you cross God, what does he say? I forgive you. I forgive you. That's love. You see, that's wisdom. And so <laughs> the guy who's in jail, he's, he's in jail because he didn't understand the wisdom of God's love. He had his own understanding of love. And that love was, I trust you as long as you do it my way. You cross me and bang. That's love. That was love for his parents. As long as my dad gave me what I wanted, I loved him. But he wasn't really a lovable guy. I just used him. That's what they thought love was. And to teach them and go in and talk to them in terms of God's love. Oh, what a joy it is to, to see the change come over them and to understand that, you know, you don't, God's love, you don't do it to take advantage of people. God's love is just to give. And after you've given, given a little bit more. 
And as we know, scripture says, you know, you find somebody without a coat, give them a coat. God will supply you with another coat. He'll take care of you. He always has. Trust in the Lord. See the difference in terms of how people react, what one person says and another one in terms of just the aspect of love from that standpoint. And so wisdom goes a long way in showing and, and sharing that and teaching what true relationship with God means. Okay, thanks for that question, that's good. Proverbs also enjoins us to fear the Lord. As we noted in lesson one, to fear the Lord means to regard him with reverent awe, to trust in him as the Lord of our life and to serve him in willing obedience. Okay, so those would be some things that we probably should underline. Reverent awe, that's what we talked about this morning or this afternoon already. Trusting him as the Lord of our life, not just the day or just an instance, but in everything. And to serve him in willing obedience, not because I have to. Not because I have to. That's the wisdom of the work area. Okay? You go get a job, you have to do this job. And if you don't do it, you're out of here. Okay? That's not how God works. He tells us how to do things. He, he gives us all of the advice and everything. He gives us the ability. And when we fail, he says, try again. I love you. You're forgiven. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Let's take a look at chapter 14, verse 26. Someone would read that verse. Whoever fears the Lord has a secure future, and for their children, it will be a refuge. All right, thank you. Here again, this word fear the Lord, you see, this is not being afraid of the Lord. This is standing in awe of the Lord, knowing that he has ability to do all things and has our interest at heart. He who fears the Lord has a secure fortress, listening to the Lord and his children, okay? So there's benefit, not just for us, there's benefit for who? Generations coming up. Generations coming up. Okay. This is all, this is God's way. This is God's way. How to be a blessing to others. And as we follow that example, that becomes the blessing to the generations to come as we live our lives from that standpoint. What does the fear of the Lord provide to those who fear him? According to this passage, 20, verse 26. Okay, secure fortress. Security, safety. Yeah. This is also true for their children. Well, this is how children gain habits, good habits. Let's take a look at chapter 18, verse 10. Someone read verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs into it and is safe. Okay. 
How comforting is that? Okay. How comforting is that? This is where your safety net is. And again, chapter 30, verse 5. Every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Thank you. Okay. Is that comforting? Yes. Every word of God is flawless. What else in the world do you know is flawless? <laughs> what else do we know is flawless? So you say, you know, and yet we keep wanting to go back to the world and say, well, what does the world say about this? And what does the world say? And, you know, well, everyone else is doing it. So I guess it's all right for me to do it. Ouch. Ouch. That doesn't work from that standpoint. <laughs> God is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Page 23. Chapter 14, verse 27. Turn to that one. Fourteen, verse 27. In a passage with about the fear of the Lord. Someone read that. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of light, turning a man from the snares of death. All right. All right. Fountain of life. Okay. Again, it is not about being afraid of God. It's about trusting in the Lord. Trusting in the Lord brings true life. And if you turn from it, trust in man, then we are visited with the snare of death. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to, and this doesn't happen often because these proverbs, as you are seeing, do not necessarily come in some order, some grouping and that like it's all one thing uh the writer puts down and there's one or two verses and they may fit together and then the next two is a whole different topic okay so so that's why we will be doing a lot of that going from a verse or two of this and a verse or two of that where the uh, guide that wrote this has put some of those things together uh, one of those chapters however that is pretty uniform all the way through is chapter three. And I'd like to us to turn to chapter three. And we're going to just, if right now we'll put the book aside and we're just going to go through chapter three, a group of verses by a group of verses and share. And I hope you will share and, and just as it strikes you, tell me what it brings to your mind or what attention you have. Let me start out with verses one and two. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. Now, if you notice, at least on mine, the heading of this chapter is benefits of wisdom. Okay, benefits of wisdom. So. So this is where we're at with this whole thing. Do not forget my teaching. That's wisdom. Keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. Anything special that that says to you? And if we follow his teachings, he will take care of us. Okay. Follow his teach. It seems so simple, doesn't it? <laughs> and and it is. It really is to follow it. It's when we don't follow it that we find ourselves in trouble. Takes care of it. 
Keep my commands in your heart. How does one keep his commands in your heart? How do you do that? By Bible birth, by church, by being with fellow Christians. Wonderful. Yeah. Keeping keeping that aspect going and all. Studying his word. Memorizing. Okay. You know, that that has you got to pretty much gone out of the whole educational process and system, at least in, in some areas, you know. Uh, it, it didn't have to be even with biblical stuff, but memorization of this and that was all part of the educational process. You memorize the, uh, the multiplication table. That's how you learned it. You memorized it. Now you... They're not, it's not taught memorizing. You taught some system for it and all. I have no idea. I probably would fail at it, but, but it, it's that type of a thing. Memorizing. You see, that's, that's the wisdom of God. That's the wisdom of God to memorize from that standpoint. Keep my commands in your heart. And to do that is to memorize. That's that's why, you know, if you took catechism class, your pastor asked you to memorize this and memorize the articles, memorize the meanings to the Lord's Prayer, all of those things. Why? To keep them in your heart. Otherwise, when they're gone and when you need to rely on something, it's not there. Or we have to find another way from that standpoint. I don't know what it is. Verse, verses three and four. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. What's the wisdom here? Studying. Studying. Okay. All to be faithful and have love. Faithfulness and love. Two distinct pieces. Faithfulness and love. Don't let them leave you. It's a challenge. I mean, the world we live in isn't really a very loving world. It's not a world that, you know, teaches us even to love. It teaches us how to get things. It teaches us all the wrong things, in fact. But wisdom says, let love and faithfulness be faithful. How many times... Have we heard and said, well, you need to be faithful to yourself. You need to be faithful. You know, you can't do one thing one day and then change your mind and do something else the next day. What is What kind of impression does that leave on somebody? I mean, when you walk away and say, well, I'm going to do this. If they change their mind, they're going to do something different tomorrow. Who are they? You know, every day is changed. Every day is different. And then God's word says, bind them around your neck. <laughs> he didn't say just tie them, bind them, make it difficult for them to get away. <laughs> Write them on the tablet of your heart. Tablet. Engrave them, okay? Don't let them get erased. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. You see, wisdom tells us how to live. And then it tells us what we can expect from it. That's God's way. Verses five and six. We've already taken a look at this one. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. 
In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Verse seven and eight, would someone read that? Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. What's the suggestion here? <clears throat> here again, this fear of the Lord shows up. Again, the, it is not a fear of being afraid of the Lord. It's it's a matter of standing in awe of the Lord. Know who the Lord is. Know where wisdom comes from. If you have wisdom, if, if somebody says, well, that was a wise thing to do. Was that really you or was that the wisdom of the Lord coming through you in terms of that? That guided you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we need to seek, you see. It's, it, you know, if it works out or if it, it appears and someone says that was wise to do, it really was was a good suggestion. <laughs> Thanks be to God that he gave you that suggestion. He gave you that wisdom to say that. That's where it comes from. Stay away from evil. Verse seven, shun evil. And what is, what is the goodness of all of this according to verse eight? Good health. Good health. Yeah. Right into your bones. Yeah. Well, you're You see, you see the connection that the Lord makes in these words that that are given to us about wisdom. That when when we make the right choices, we do the right things. We remain healthier, physically healthier. See, someone said, well, you know, that ain't no big deal. When we have worry, when we have frustrations, when we have all sorts of problems, our health suffers. It suffers. And God's wisdom tells us that, you know, when we do things right, your health will be a lot better. You'll, you'll feel a lot better. You'll feel good about yourself and others will feel good about you and they'll lift you up and your world will seem like, wow, this is great. This is great. That's God's way. That's God's way. Man's way is not that way. Man's way is say, well, if you want to get something for yourself, you have to do it this way and that gives us problems and that gives us difficulties <clears throat> and then that causes worry and then we wonder wow did i do the right thing then i can't sleep at night i keep waking up but oh, you see and you wonder why down the road it's backfired on you and then it backfires <laughs> yeah yeah and it's like where did i go wrong huh. at the beginning yep right at the beginning listen. yep no little thing in terms of knowing God's wisdom. Verses 9 and 10. Someone share those with us. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your, your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. Okay, wow. So here's, here's some wisdom here. Now, there are a lot of other passages that say pretty much the same thing in scripture. That when you give to others, you'll receive 
overflowing. But this pretty much says the same thing. It's wisdom from God. Honor, you notice it says honor the Lord. When you give to others, you honor the Lord. Okay. It's not honor for you. It's not meant to be honor for me when I give. It's to honor him who has given me all things that I can give back something. But so many times here again, man's wisdom is say, well, hey, you get your name written up and you get a little bit of press and TV cameras will come out and take a picture and all this and that. Isn't that wonderful? And then you have all sorts of people knocking on your door. I need help. I need money. <laughs> and you think, oh, well, that turned out bad. Well, you see, this, <laughs> you know, it, it has a way of backfiring. <laughs> it was brought up earlier. With the first fruits of all your crops. Okay, here again, the Lord just tells us how to give. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. How does God do that? I don't know. I do not know. But I do know he does that. I know he does that. I've had experiences and I haven't put him to the test, but he's tested me on that a number of times in terms of giving. Keep thinking to myself, oh Lord, I don't have enough this month. But I'll, next month I'll do that. And I just have more problems. And when I make him first, somehow the month is always ends up with a little extra. It's just the way he works. And he has promised to do that when we keep and give the honor to him, not to ourselves, but to him. Verse 11 and 12. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son, he delights in. Well, what is the wisdom here? Again, you see, we're talking about having a relationship with our Lord, a relationship. So now he's talking about when we feel disciplined, when things aren't going right, when we, when we wonder, wow, what's happening? This has been a bad week for me. Do not despise the Lord's discipline. Do not resent his rebuke. Because the Lord is saying in his way, he loves us. And he wants to rethink in terms of what we're doing and what's happening in our lives. He wants us to reconnect, if it might be even if nothing else to continued connecting with him. Can't tell you the times that I've talked to people who have come to church for a couple of weeks. Well, I tried church, nothing changed in my life. <laughs> <laughs> nothing changed, you know, as if, you know, something magical was going to happen just because he did it, or she did it as such, okay? Well, I did. I went. You told me if I came to church, things would get better. Nothing changed. But he didn't change. The person no, comes to church. Exactly. Like that yeah. <laughs> Again, you see, all of the emphasis is on the person this way. No emphasis really on, well, what has God got in store for me? What did he tell me today that I missed out on? Just not trying to reap benefits. Yeah. You know, it's not about reaping benefits. It isn't. It isn't. I can't tell you the number of times, you know, 
uh, as I would greet people going out of church where people would say, Pastor, were you, were you in my home last week? Did you know what was going on? <laughs> <laughs> you know, no. But it, I knew they were listening to what God had to say. Not what I had, but what God had to say. And it struck them. And it meant something to them. And they were listening and they were abiding by that, you see. I don't know if you heard the story, getting off on the side, but <laughs> one of the stories goes that uh, one, of, one of the services that the pastor had was speaking about giving and uh, giving to the church and uh, pledging and those types of things and all of that. And, um, you know, he had a great sermon about that and how we need to give and all of that. And there happened to be a young person there that had never given much at all. And he started to tithe. And as he tithed over the years, he became very wealthy. He, he, he became very wealthy. And of course, the giving went up because he was tithing. At a certain point, he went to the pastor and he says, pastor, he says, you know, uh, I have been so blessed. I've been, the amount of money that I'm giving to the church is just really more than what you even need. So uh, if you don't mind, I'm just going to hold back on it and I'm going to get back on it. The pastor said, well, that's fine. You, you, you go ahead and do that. That's all right. I'll just quit praying for your blessings to be on you. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> but but you see that that's how God works and yet you know in our stupidity we think that we're doing it. You know, it's all because of my effort and all and I'm doing this. This is the relationship that God wants to have with each and every one of us. All of his people to have that close relationship and understand how much he loves us and what he has promised to us with the right heart and the wisdom to understand that. Any comments, questions? Verse 13, this will go through verse 18. Blessed is the man who finds wisdom, the man who gains understanding. For she, and again, remember the she is wisdom, is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who embrace her. Those who lay hold of her will be blessed. What kind of a sense of feeling, comfort is there in these passages? Did you kind of get an overall feeling there? It's not all monetary then. It's not all monetary, exactly. It's not all monetary, definitely from that standpoint. Does wisdom have a lot to offer? God's wisdom, a lot to offer, a lot to offer. And yet, how many times do we seek to follow through with our own wisdom instead of seeking the wisdom of God? Usually, if we do it ourselves first, we end up doing it with God because we've, we've known that we've yeah. come from. <laughs> well said, yeah. How many times we start out doing it ourselves? Yeah, sure. You know, and, and it's sometimes it's the simple things in life that we, we just fail to think that God is interested in it. You know, I baked a pie and it fell apart. <laughs> How about the next time just asking God to bless your efforts in the bacon of high? Oh, no, that's stupid. No, it's not. He wants to be part of your life. 
He wants to be part of my life. He wants to be part of every part of our life, not just this and that, and not just the, the spiritual. And, and that's what we're reading. It's not just spiritual. It's just not money. It's, it's every aspect of our life. And to just, you know, be able to, to fall into that and just let him be God and let him work with us from that standpoint. Verses 17 and 18, her ways are pleasant ways. All her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who embrace her. Those who lay hold of her will be blessed. Verses 19 and 20, would somebody read those for us? The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the deeps broke open and the clouds dropped down the dew. Okay. So where does wisdom come about here? What, what aspect of our lives is wisdom involved in? Rain and nature and yeah, nature. What would Mother Nature, as we say? Okay, Mother Nature. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, all of the aspects of the weather and conditions and outside things. God's wisdom, you know, He's involved with all of that. We have this climate change and climate control and, and all of these things. Can we really control climate? <laughs> okay. Now when it comes down to it, we can't. We have, you know, we can make some adjustments and all. We can uh, uh, help out a little bit. But as far as controlling, if God says, let it rain, it's going to rain. And if the winds are going to blow, it's going to blow. You know, our are people forecasting the weather and all. And how much time is spent on TV with weather reports? <laughs> okay, I don't know about you, but, but I mean, it's like every five minutes, the weatherman's gotta be on there. After you get one piece of news, then we have the weather report and all of this and that. And they seem to leave you with a cliffhanger. <laughs> so you watch the next one. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Got, right. You, got you going. But is it exact? <laughs> Tremendously different at times. God is in control. We're not. Our wisdom is to understand that and know that, you know, it'll be what it is. It'll be. Does that mean we we just take a chance and we're going to have a picnic next week and well we'll take a chance on it raining? No, we we have opportunity, but the biggest opportunity is we have a chance to pray about it and say, Lord, if, if you would favor us with good weather for our picnic, we would be delighted. Oh, you want me to be involved in your picnic? Well, I'll be glad to come. You say, Oh man. Wow. Look. <laughs> yeah, sure. You know, because he's the one in charge. And they're gonna be the weatherman. Well, I checked the weather and they said it's gonna be a nice day. And look at it, it's raining, you know. And here we are outside. It, it, you know, wisdom from God, gifts from God. And that all is that's all relational. Yeah. I want to share a gift. Um, my brother was killed in Vietnam in uh, 1968. Okay. 
And the letters I received from him, it was just always just the weather was so terrible over there. It was either raining all the time or it was just so hot. And we're in the limousine driving to the cemetery. And I thought, oh, Lord, I wish you would let us, let us have those big, puffy snowflakes. <laughs> <laughs> Those big white puffy slope snowflakes. And he did. Oh. Uh, the weather was too bad to go to the where he was being interred, but so we had to go into a mausoleum. Uh, uh, yeah. And uh, but I was I just had that on my mind. I thought, oh Larry. What a wonderful gift to give you is a beautiful big puffy snow. And by golly. <laughs> by God. <laughs> by God. It, it did. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you know, and, and those things happen just to renew our faith and to show us that he is listening and all of that from that standpoint. And we understand his will be done. It isn't going to always work out as far as that goes, but, but he knows and we can prepare for it on that basis. But yeah, wisdom, wisdom just entails every part of who we are, what we do and everything else. And God's a part of that. Our God is, is an intimate part of, and he wants to be a part of it, but he doesn't force you and I to do it. He doesn't force us and say, you must. He says, I'm here, use me, use me. Yeah. We got to do that when we, as family, when we went on vacation, we did not for a long time. And then we, we decided that, you know, when we went on vacation before we left the house, we sat down in prayer as a family, all the kids and my wife and I, and we prayed for a good vacation, free of rain, difficulty and injuries, and give us some blessings and all of that. And, oh. <laughs> great vacations. We had great vacations. And they changed. Attitudes changed. How? You know, only God, only our God from that standpoint. Verse 21, my son, preserve sound judgment and discernment. Do not let them get out of your sight. They will be life for you, an ornament to grace your neck. Then you will go on your way in safety and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Have no fear of sudden disaster or of the ruin that overtakes the wicked. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being snared. So what's the things that are talked about here? What are What is this part of wisdom that we are to do? In verse 21, it tells us right off. <coughs> Preserve sound judgment and discernment what's discernment anyone have an idea knowing right from wrong <laughs> knowing what's the best of choices discern that it's difficult it's difficult but it doesn't have to be a chance when we seek god Because many a time there's no right answer. Yeah. Hey God, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, either way, come on. Yeah, either way, who doesn't know? And yet, he can make it right. Mm -hmm. He can make it right. And that's discernment from that standpoint and involving him with that. Yeah. 
you'll go on your way in safety. When you contact, when you, you're in touch with the Lord, when, when you put, give this to prayer, you have nothing more to fear because the Lord is on your side. He's walking with you from that standpoint. Your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you won't be afraid. You can sleep sweet. Verse 27. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it. And it is in your power to act. Do not say to your neighbor, come back later, I'll give it tomorrow, when you now have it with you. Do not plot harm against your neighbor who lives trustfully near you. Do not accuse a man for no reason when he has done you no harm. Do not envy a violent man or choose any of his ways, for the Lord detests a perverse man, but takes the upright into his confidence. Well, now wisdom comes to us kind of in a different form here, doesn't it? It really tells us what to do and what not to do. What's the first thing it tells us? Help our neighbor. Help our neighbor. Yes. Do not withhold help. when it is in your power to do it, okay? Wow, that's wisdom. Why would we withhold help? I don't have time. I'm busy, I got, I got something else to do tomorrow. <laughs> have all sorts of excuses or what we think are reasons why to withhold. And the Lord is saying, no. He says, I'll cover you. <laughs> I'll cover you. I'll, I'll provide you with more of whatever you need from that standpoint. Don't say to your neighbor, come back tomorrow. Later. When you have it right now. That's not wisdom. That's our pride taking over. That's our, well, I want to choose when I give it to you. I always, I have always been a proponent that, you know, if somebody wanted something or it was a chance to give something to our kids in particular or something, Many times it was suggest that, well, why don't you wait till their birthday and give it to them? And I would say, no, I want to do it now. I don't want to have it as a reason. I, I, I didn't want to point to it and say, well, you, you get this because it's your birthday. You get this because you're my son or you're my daughter. You get it from that standpoint. And, uh, you know, it just was one of those things that God placed in my heart that, you know, you don't have to wait to Christmas to give out a gift. Christmas isn't, wasn't meant from that standpoint. Christmas is a celebration of the birth of our Savior. Gifts came into play, but those gifts can be given at any time. And they're appreciated at any time. And I bet if you, if you think back on some of the gifts you got, you got them when they were least expected. Those were the ones that were really, you were grateful for. Those were the ones you were really grateful for. Least expected it. Yeah. Don't plot harm against your neighbor. Oh, that's a difficult one. <laughs> If we don't, unless we have nice neighbors, but if we don't, <laughs> hmm. yeah. what should we do if we have a difficult neighbor? What is God's wisdom? Pray for them. Pray for them. What does he say? Love your neighbor. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, pray, pray for them. You know, put those things into practice rather than thinking about how I can get even or, you know, I hope God gets you. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. See, I find that the older I get, the less I do that. Okay. Sure. <laughs> because I'm getting wisdom now. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> and I feel that. That's. And, and I, you know, wonder how that came about, you know? Yeah. God grabbed you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and what you're talking about is exactly what scripture tells us about maturing in the faith. As long as we have life, we're to mature in our faith and grow and make changes from that standpoint. That's what life is really all about. It isn't just to let it kind of slide by the wayside, but it's to mature, to, to put it into practice. And, and we we do get a little bit smarter <laughs> as we get older. We do get a little bit smarter. Uh, but thanks be to God. You know, he gives us two, he gives us that gift as well. He lets us do that. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And the last verses 33 to 35. The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the righteous. He mocks proud mockers, but gives grace to the humble. The wise inherit honor, but fools he holds up to shame. Okay, what particular aspect attitude is, he is there, we're talking about here in terms of wisdom? Attitude of pride. Okay, the wise inherit honor, okay? The wise, again, are, don't point to yourself, point to God. He'll take care of the rest of it. We, we don't need a whole lot of hats on the back because it just builds us up and we are liable to fall farther down for one thing and secondly that's God is the one who gives us the ability to do that what we do so this chapter that we have really quickly have gone through in a way is a chapter that speaks to us and talks to us about all of life's areas all of life's area and the wisdom to, to connect with God, to, to fear and trust in the Lord above all things, to put that all together from that standpoint like that. And when we do that, God has all of these promises waiting for us and giving us guidance and direction to do that. Any particular thoughts or ideas or anything that comes from this particular chapter that we've taken a look at. Benefits of wisdom. Benefits of wisdom, we talked about. Well, one of the things um, that, you know, I, I kind of was messing with me, was messing with me in my head was the fear, the fear God. And, and that always uh, was an issue for me because I kept thinking, well, how can I fear him? How can I come to him if I'm afraid of him? Yes. You know, and so that was something that was kind of a, a push and pull for me. Okay. Uh, and it's much clearer. Much clearer now. Thank you. <laughs> Praise be to God. Yeah. Praise be to God. Yeah. And, and that's it. And, and like I said, so much in our lives, uh, you know, we use God as some sort of bad guy who's going to come and get you. You know, you keep doing that. God's going to get you for that. Uh, and and we, we turn God into a terrible monster of sorts uh, on that basis. And, and we have to be, you know, very careful, but to fear the Lord and uh, is and the right understanding of it 
is to stand in awe of that fear is just how awesome you are, Lord, that you are take care of all of my needs, you know, and I think I'm doing a good job. You know, I'm not doing a good job at all. He's doing the good job and I'm just trying to do the best I can to follow in his ways. That's all I can do from that standpoint. One thought I had was too that he was talking about perfect wisdom and perfect things. Yeah. We're imperfect people. At first, I was getting, you know, kind of this guilt feeling of like, just thinking that this is the ideal, perfect, but our goal, is, you know, thing, but we're not going to live up to it. Yeah, <laughs> no. yeah. Perfection is not there for us. Perfection is not there. And, and and for us to, you know, think that we have the answer, you know, the answer may be for us, but it may not be for anyone else. The answer may be for us, but it may not be for anyone else. Uh, you know, people I'm sure as as pastor, you know, what would you do in this situation? I've been asked, you know, what I do? I can't tell a person what I would do. I'm not there. You are there. That person is there. The only thing I can say, take it to the Lord. And whatever you do do, you know the Lord will be with you. But you don't have to, but you know, what would I do? I, you know, unless you're there and that, one of the things that for a long time there, I don't know, back in the 80s and 90s, people were saying, you know, write, write out your wills and put in your uh, med medical care, what you wanted done and what you didn't have done and write that all down. How can you do that without knowing the situation and everything that's going on? And, and we look at our age and I, I can look around and I say, I know that what you might've done when you were 50 or younger, <laughs> You won't do it when you're 70 or 80. It's going to be completely different. Completely different. So don't put that in writing that somebody's got to follow something that has changed because we've changed in all of that. We may say, you know, if I come with this disease, make me comfortable and the Lord be praised. On the other hand, we may someone may say, if I come with this disease. Fight it to the fullest, you know. But I can't tell somebody else what to do. We can't that, you know, that's each one for themselves. But that wisdom that does happen comes from God and will guide us and direct us. And he knows what happens. Uh, the best story I had, I was just in the ministry and uh, this elderly man had heart condition really bad. This is back in the 90s. Uh, heart was probably, he, he told me it was at 17 to 23% effective. That's how bad it was. He had a, um, not a pacemaker, uh, fibrillator. Now this is back in the 90s. So this is an old fibrillator. And when these things went off, I mean, it totally exploded for him. And he said, you know, he said, Pastor, he says, I don't like to be laying here waiting for that thing to go off. He says, it's gone off a couple of times okay. and I don't want to go through that again. He says, can I quit taking my pills? Ooh, I'm not ready for this type of question. I'm just new pastor. And I thought, wow, what do I do? Well, I had just gotten a book in terms of care at life's ending. And I says, well, the best I can tell you right now is to read this book. And then you can make up your mind. He read the book through and I went and saw him several weeks later and all. He says, well, I read the book. I says, yes. He says, well, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to continue to take my pills. Good. I couldn't tell him what to do. I could, you know, it, He's, he's got to make that choice. 
the interesting thing is, is that you know, he continued to live for months later. Uh, he went into a nursing home and family would join him from time to time and everything was great. And, uh, and I got a call that he had passed away and I thought, oh boy, and had a heart attack. And I, I asked the wife, I says, was it his heart? No. I says, you gotta be kidding. I said, no. She said, she said, he, for some reason, he said the night before he called all of us to be at his bedside, was feeling great. We had a wonderful time. Everything great, left. He woke up for breakfast. The nurses brought him breakfast in the morning, ate breakfast. When they came back to pick up his tray, he was gone. He was gone. They found out later that he had cancer of the brain and that took him silently. It wasn't his heart at all. It wasn't his heart at all. So again, what we think may be our demise or whatever, the Lord has in store, you know. Wow. And I thought, once again, God showed, showed his grace and his mercy to the family, to him. He didn't have to go through that burst of firepower that would go surging through his body. It was going to kill him anyways. And uh, it was peaceful and quiet. And the family was overjoyed. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for the sharing. We're going to stop at this point. We'll pick it up next time. And, uh, at this point here and go from there next week. Let's close with prayer. And Lord God, we thank you for this time together. We, we thank you, Lord, for the wisdom that you have made available to us, for you making yourself available to us in all the conditions, all the possibilities. And Lord, although we have failed at times and you know that we will fail in the future, we know that you still love us and you will constantly be there for us, for all of our needs and all of that. And, we ask, Lord, that you would not only bless us with your wisdom, but bless us with the gift of faith and, and trust in you, that knowing in you, we have eternal life through our Savior, Jesus Christ. As he has taught us to pray, our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you again. God's blessings on the rest of the week. Bye, Jill. Bye. Ha, 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 ha.